Yes, today we are jumping back into some more productive bees. I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode, but we need to do some more stuff with the bees. Of course, it took quite a while to get the bees set up, and we have more to do today, including breeding and making several bees. But we're also going to go about automating the bees production. And I've already sort of got a jump start on this. I made a bunch of advanced hives by breed or by <laughs> breed, not breeding, by uh, trading with our villager. Um, thankfully, if you create a bunch of these items and you want to actually sort of jump ahead with your villagers, you can just use this item right here. You can just use a stone and it will automatically restock their trade. It is so nice. So you just right click it after the trades run out and it immediately restocks, meaning you can just keep going and going and going. And it's crazy because you get 10 of these per emerald, making trading just so fast. Um, so I was able to get all of these advanced beehives and they're ready to go. All we have to do is basically get them set up. As you can see, this is how I want to have them set up. The same as this, so that way the feeding slab is in front of the hive but not directly in front of it, otherwise it will not work. Uh, because I do plan on putting simulators on all of these. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of while, a little bit to get this set up, but at least we'll have this all ready to go. Now, to, to automate this, I'm probably going to be using Xnet. I think Xnet is going to be one of the easiest solutions for automating all of these, because all we really have to do is just pull the items out, send them to the machine, the centrifuge, and then after that, facade them, and then we'll take all of the items that are created inside the centrifuge and just send them into our storage network. I think this will be really simple. Now, all of my bee stuff has been producing, and these have been dropping so many honeycombs, which is really, really nice. Um, and I, I should have enough honeycombs process in order to make this egg here. So I'm going to need nine of these in order to produce this. And we just need to craft ourselves a fake dragon egg. This is gonna allow me to upgrade the centrifuge. I am going to need a bunch of these though. It looks like combs and upgrades and also some copper. We should have everything. So, and just like that, boop, we have the heated centrifuge. Now with some speed upgrades, this centrifuge is going to be pretty fast. Um, now, I do want to place this. I guess we can just go ahead and use this area right here. And, oh, it looks like I do have a bee stuck back here. Unfortunately, some of the bees, yeah, it kind of reproduced a little bit. I'll just let that bee uh, kind of roam out there. Also, it looks like my flux points are kind of broken. I am on the new update, or the latest update, as of the time of this recording. So, yeah, some things are a little bit odd. But this right here, once we put some upgrades in, should do really well. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have an export cable set up to this, that is going to hook into our network. But we do need to get a little bit of the Xnet set up. So let's go ahead and get started with Xnet. Now, uh, I should be able to take this and place it within the wall. Here we'll have a controller right here. Now it doesn't have any power, but we're gonna fix that real quick with just some power here. And this should be able to sustain itself over time. Um, I'm actually going to be breaking into the wall because we can facade. That's the whole reason why I want to use Xnet is because we should be able to facade our cables in this method. Um, so speaking of facading, I think what I'm just going to do is down here to hide our power cable. I'm just going to put the flux point right here. Now, this does need a little bit of residual power to sort of jumpstart itself. So I do want to go ahead and give it some power. But once we have some power, we should, it should be able to power itself uh, via our cables, and we can, we can use that as our first little program here to set this up. Um, now, it is, it could be a little complicated, like Xnet is definitely on the uh, more complicated side of things, but there's a couple of different cable things that we need to worry about. I'm going to be using blue connectors. Blue connectors are probably the easiest to make, same with blue network cables, but you can also make red cables and so on and so forth. I tend to go with blue because it's just cheaper um, and easier to come by because of lapis. Uh, but you have a blue connector and you also have an advanced connector. In our case here, we don't really need an advanced connector except for the heated centrifuge. We we might need one. Actually, I don't even think we need it for the heated centrifuge. But basically, it would allow you to 
put the items in on any side of the machine depending on where it's connected. So uh, for example, if I wanted to put items into the top and this only required the top, a regular connector I'd have to place on top where is an advanced connector, I could place it on the side and just tell it to interact with the top. Um, so that's a little bit different with the blue connectors. And I think also the uh, blue connectors, I believe the advanced ones can work on multiple machines, more than one. Um, so that's also another thing. So let's go ahead and get this self powering. So to do that, I just have one connector going straight to the power and also connecting the machine. This should be set up just like this. And we are going to create a new channel. This is going to be energy and create it. Now this interface can be a little daunting, but I, I believe it's, it's easy. Um, right here is our point. This is producing the power. So we're going to create a extract on this channel to extract power from that. And then we'll create here and have it insert power from there. So now this should be self powering and we should never have to worry about that again. Good thing about these cables though, um, is that, uh, let's see, I should be able to upgrade one of these to an advanced. Let's just make one advanced. The good part about these cables is we can facade them. So that's why I'm putting them in the wall, but this should be able to interact with the top of this block. It can power it, send items and all of that from one cable. So we also need this one powered. So let's go ahead and create an insert on that. And of course we can choose what side we want it to operate from. In this case, I just want it to send power to the back. It really doesn't matter where it's sending power so long as it has some. Now all of these, all of these need a connector attached to the bottom, just like that. And I think if we want to detach this, um, I believe refined storage or not refined storage, um, RF tools. I think the smart wrench should work on this. I think the smart wrench disconnects the connectors. Oh, I could be wrong. I don't want these connected to all of the slabs. So technically I just need to unselect everything, but up. So as you can see, it should be connected in the up or just not don't save those settings. Okay. Or we could just not worry about it. It's going to be facaded anyways. It just seems a little odd that it just decides it wants to connect to the sides as well. I wonder if I do this. There we go. Now it holds it. Just don't remove the up first. And it seems like it's saving it or it's not saving it. Weird. But oh, well, we're going to have to figure this out and we're going to have to number these. So I would like to number them if at all possible. So, for example, this one over here, we can call one. And for all of these, I'm going to have to name them. This one, for example, should be one. Hopefully it'll save. And when I open this back up, it's one. This will help us tremendously when we go to create the program inside of our XNet system. You know what? Now that I think about it, I really don't have to number these or anything because we're going to be telling all of these that are connected to the advanced hive to extract anyways. Um, so all of them are going to be extracting and just sending the items. There's really not going to be any sort of filtering going on. It's just going to be straightforward. And I guess just connecting all of these should just work. No big deal. So, and just like that, I have everything up and connected. Um, so all I have to do is just fill in a little bit of dirt here. And as you can see, they are all hooked in. Now I am going to have to facade all of these blocks here. Not a big deal as you get a lot of facades. Um, and it should look really good. I'm thinking about using some sort of fence to sort of as a, as a post here. And I'm hoping these aren't too close together to work. I figure this is actually probably one of the most compact ways, unless you actually just have a solid line of them, but I wanted to have a, a, the ability to walk through now to get them processing. Um, all we have to do is just go over here to our XNet, which is hooked in there down at the bottom. And we will see a ton of things, a ton of advanced drawers. Let's create a new channel and we'll call this item right here. So as you can see, XNet item. And really we just have to go through and create on all of these. And now you can copy, right? You can copy uh, the connector to the clipboard right here. And then I believe you just paste. So whatever you have it set to on this, for example, is gonna be extract. And then we'll set it to stack right here. And then I believe that's the lowest number of operations. 
That should be fine. We just need to copy this. And then go here. Let's close this out. And then we'll just... On all of these, we should be able to paste. I think we can copy. Copy this connector to the clipboard. Paste. And just keep pasting on all of these. It's going to make this so much easier. Um, and then, once we're done with that, we want it to insert into the centrifuge. So we'll create one. Insert. And we want this to go into the top, the north side. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward on all this. And that's almost 100% automated here. The only thing we have to do is get our refined storage network over, so that way all of the outputs for this go into the refined storage network. Now, of course, I can't be having all of this like ugly cabling laying around, right? So I've definitely got a facade this. So the facades are pretty cheap to make, and they're really cool. All you gotta do is click on the block that you want the block to look like, and then just click it on like this. And as you can see, it facades it and you would never even know there's a cable there, including doing cool things like this, where you can have this just in a wall and you would never know. So right click this and place that. I can click here, make that stone. You would never even know. I don't know if this one's gonna work because this is kind of a weird block. There it goes. Yeah, you would never, you would never realize that this was in the wall here pretty hidden and really really nice other than the fact that the fence does not connect to this side kind of weird but other than that it's pretty pretty fail safe here i mean this this works wonders and it can also work on things like a fence for example um so if i want to use this block i believe i can just click here oh it doesn't work because it's too big i think um we might end up using a solid block here. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. Now, with all of this automated, other than the fact that we don't have bottles going into this, which is kind of fine. We don't really need all of that honey there because we can just make it. Um, we, we should be able to just leave them. They'll, they're going to work even if they're full of honey, like you can see behind me. But there's a couple of bees that I think I really want to get into. And we should be able to do that today. And that is going to be all of the modium bees. Yes, all the modium uh, vibranium and unobtainium should all be doable, doable for the most part today. Now to do this, it is a bit of a process and also requires a skeleton, a skeletal bee. This bee is a little hard to come by, uh, because you need to place an empty advanced beehive, um, it says in an unlit area and the bees will move in over time. So we need to do that, uh, create ourselves a little setup for this. Um, shouldn't be too difficult. And we do have the advanced beehives to do that. I'm actually probably going to use more than one. And I'm thinking we could do that down here. I know normal mobs are probably going to spawn. Um, you know what? We could probably not do it down here. We should do it somewhere else. We could just create a little hole in the ground. And let's see. Go from there. Probably want to make it a five by five. Right? Five by five. Mobs should definitely spawn down here when I close this up. And I'll put a couple of beehives. So, um, I, d I think it has to be more than just the regular advanced. So we have the advanced beehive and then the... The dark oak beehive. I think this works. Like this, and then... Is this another beehive? Oh, it just has different data associated with it. Um, I think we're gonna have to go grab some emeralds. The emeralds. And we gotta go over to this villager, because I, I think I, this needs to be a complete set in order for this to work. So I will go to this person over here. And there we go, grab some expansion blocks. That's what we need, expansion box. That's right. So with this, we should be able to slap the expansion box on here, close it up, and then hopefully end up with some bees inside. That uh, just over time. It looks like we got a we got a pillager. Nice. Let me get out of here. Now all the other bees are pretty straightforward. 
Um, so we already have a glowing bee and we need to kind of get an emerald bee, um, which is going to be a diamond bee and a slimy bee. So these things are going to need to be bred together as, as we can, can move along. So a glowing and a chocolate mining bee. That is gonna be our next one. Uh, we do have a chocolate bee, chocolate mining bee, and I definitely have a glowing bee right here. So these two bees inside the breeder produces a redstone bee. I know they're not really colored here, but it will work. And uh, I think I'm gonna use just a regular old bee cage. Nothing real big there. I don't know why it disappeared. The image. Uh, we put the right stuff in here. That and that. There it is. There. Okay. Um. Now these should just receive poppies. So just some flowers. Like roses are fine. So we'll give it two roses. Breed these together. It's going to take some time. Um, what I could do is go ahead and take all of the speed upgrades out of here. And I believe the speed upgrades will go in here and make this significantly faster. So now that I have a redstone bee, well, I'm going to need to do the uh, redstone with a blue banded uh, bee. And I don't know if I have the blue banded. I believe it comes from one of the trees, I think. Blue banded bee. Do I have this? Um, it can be found living alone in the forest around the overworld. Look up recipes for the bee. Mm, what nest does this spawn in? Yep, it just comes from, it looks like, the jungle nest, dark nest, or specifically an acacia nest. So this should be very specific on this bee, but it is definitely a bee that we're going to need. Oh, and it's nighttime. That's right. With it being nighttime, the bees will go right back in the hive. So I do have to wake this up. Hopefully it doesn't jump into any of the other hives. Once it does awake. Let me pop out of here. Oh, does it have a timer? Oh no, it has like a cooldown timer if it was night. It does seem to be going down pretty fast though. All right, it should be popping out anytime soon. And... No, it is inhabited. Well, that was kind of interesting. It, I had to break the block, and once I broke the block, it was actually inside the block underneath it. That was a little odd. Uh, but now we can move on and generate the lapis. Now, with the redstone bee, I could just go ahead and put it in the hive. This is only going to complete once you have a comb, so you'd have to put it in the hive. I'm not super worried about completing it. Other than more, I'm more or less worried about just getting through the progression, as you can see here of the particular types of bees. And just like that, I have the bee cage, I have the red bee and the blue bee being combined together. And that is gonna produce our lapis bleed and so on and so forth. Like this is gonna be the ender and lapis. The hardest one to get though, like I said, was the spawn, it, it, basically getting the skeletal bee, which requires you to have this weird farm thing set up. And then you need to feed those skeleton bees a wither rose, which we're gonna to have to get. I think I actually, we have wither roses, um, but we're gonna to need to, take the withered roses and turn one of the skeletal bees into a withered bee. And then we can just start producing all of these. So we would need an ancient bee, which makes netherite. And I mean, after that, we're like golden. Like those are some of the best bees in the game right there to have automated. Now to get our ancient bee, I do have myself a diamond bee right here. And it's actually one of two because I went ahead and made another one. Any of the bees that actually need an item to transform, it's of course going to use the bee that we just created. So this one is a full grown bee, diamond bee. And then I just turn it into an ancient bee. And now we have ourselves an ancient bee all ready to go. Uh, however, we are still waiting on the skeleton. So let's go check on that. I don't know if it's been long enough, but we should be able to easily pop down in here where it was dark. Ooh, and we have a zombie bee. That's one of them. Uh, so we just kind of have to wait a little bit longer and hope for a skeleton bee, but a zombie bee is really nice. And the fact that, uh, we can even get those is pretty crazy that way. So I did not hurt this. <laughs> I did not kill this guy. However, I just realized there's a kamikaze bee. 
What? When I get attacked? Angry bees won't attack you. 30% chance to spawn a... What? And then this right here, this bee, I captured. It was a little... It's a little bee. Look at it. What? And you can actually keep it inside of the bee. That's so cool. And that that was crazy. They killed that that guy so fast. So it happened. I have myself a skeletal bee, and we also have a zombie as well. You gotta love all the bee puns. It's so funny. Um, but with these, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm, I, there might still duplicate down there, so we we should still get more skeletal bees. Uh, but this particular bee, we need to feed it wither rose. I mean, that's just how it's gonna be. One wither, wither rose going to be served up. There we go. And now we have a withered bee. And with that, we combine these two, the withered bee and the ancient bee. And that should be all we need to make the all the modium bee. This is the all the modium bee breed a withered bee and an ancient bee. Yep. And there's the all the modium bee. Perfect. And a cage. Two of those. And we are about to have all the modium bees. Now, I definitely, on these bees, we're going to need three of them each. Uh, because I believe to upgrade to the next tier bees. Well, I guess maybe not. Because, yeah, we need all the modium. But actually, we just need two of each. Because we should be able to breed these two together um, with within the actual hive. But that may not be true. Because some, some of these bees are not breedable. Um, but if anything, we can always breed them up just like this. It's pretty simple. So I do see here that it says this, uh, this bee species cannot breed amongst themselves. So we are going to have to go the route of probably not breeding the bees themselves, but just creating five of them from the start. And then we don't really have to worry about it. Right? So this is a child bee and all we have to do is just raise that child bee. But in this case, we have another one sitting here. It should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make, I don't know, I should make five each. That seems pretty reasonable. It's just making five of each type, the Aldamodium, Vibranium, and so on and so forth. So on the Vibranium, it's just an Ancient and Draconic. And then last but not least, it's just an Aldamodium and Vibranium added together. It's just going to be a time sink between this, this machine and this machine, honestly. I did go ahead and set the refined storage up to the bottom of this. So anything that these bees that currently are running are generating are going right into the refined storage system. Now I have all five of my Aldamodium bees. As you can see, some of them are nocturnal and some of them are diurnal, which is kind of interesting. Thankfully, they're all high producing, which is great. But I guess having a mixture of them wouldn't be a bad thing. That way they're always sort of producing. Um, now I did run into a weird thing. Now for this, it does show that we are going to have to use Draconic Dust, so this is a little bit of an odd thing, but underneath the Draconic Bee, we'll put that, and then that, and that should jumpstart the Vibranium Bee, and of course, we're going to need five of these as well. Now, unfortunately, the last one is going to be a little difficult, but I think we might be able to still do it. So now that we have our current bee set up, um, I think it'll be time to make a block of our material, right? So vibranium, we need to make a block of it. And we're also gonna need all the modium and need a block of it. Now they're gonna have their own hives. So I'm gonna put the all the modium here, the vibranium here, and then eventually unobtainium will be on the front here too. Um, but we do need to get the upgrades inside of this. And then I think production upgrades and we should be able to use this to farm enough of these two materials to be able to actually breed the unobtainium bee. So let's see how this is going to work. So I, I was able to make one productivity upgrade. The goal is to definitely have more productivity upgrades in here. So let's go ahead and get the all the modium bees inside here. So there they go. All the modium bees. Two more. And then this is the vibranium bees. And they do need a block of their material in front of them in order for them to work. And we should be able to accelerate this to hopefully get some products in return. So those should be jump started. That should be producing. You can see all the modium combs. And it's producing the nuggets. 
And that's what we want to see. We want to see the nuggets being produced. That is fantastic. And the combs building up. We might get enough from doing this. So after using up all of the stored time in my bottle for the most part, I think we have this. So nuggets, we have 169 of the vibranium and that should equate to 18. That's pretty good. And then all the modium, a little bit less, but definitely substantial. And it's going to take four each, four each to upgrade this. Um, so B cages. I'm going to need two B cages, one to capture this B. And where did that go? Where does it go? Did it just yeet my B out of existence? Oh no, it puts it. Okay, so it goes into the system and then just. Okay, adds it in the refined storage. That's good to know. There's the vibranium B. And then I need my all the modium B. There we go. Should put it in the system. Okay, all the modium and vibranium. And then we just breed these together. So this is the vibranium, all the modium. And I think I got it backwards. All the modium and vibranium. That's supposed to work. Vibranium and all the modium bees. Oh, there it is. But I don't think this is the uh, correct amount. Something must be wrong here. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the all the modium needs the vibranium and the vibranium needs the unobtainium. Okay. So it is not that way around. Why is this thing I just now compl- Oh, true, we did just update the pack so some of the quests were changed. Okay, so vibranium needs four of those and then the all the modium needs four vibranium. And there we go. We will have our first unobtainium B. And I think we can make at least two of these, three of these. Yeah, we can make at least three bees. So after getting all of this done, very, very time consuming, I must add, <laughs> we have the things we need. So these are all adults. They are high production, which is very, very nice. Um, they're all dineural, which means they work during the day. And I did go and farm some more unobtainium, just enough to be able to make a singular block for our farm. And then I'm going to add the production upgrades and everything similar to how I have it set up over here. And hopefully this will be the way we farm these items for now. Last but not least, let's get these bad boys in. And there we go. We have unobtainium bees about to be farmable or they, they already farmable. Um, and then of course I have many other bees that I do want to get set up. However, that is going to have to happen another day and in another episode. Uh, because today we are just about out of time. And that, my friends, leads me to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks, if I can spell, <laughs> or less type, thanks going to Alex of Volk. I think it's Alex of Volk. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. I really do appreciate you. Your guys' support goes a long ways. And of course, if you're interested in joining the Discord and potentially supporting yourself, all you have to do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join the amazing community of over 25,000 members there. And of course, if you do support, you get access to all kinds of tremendous perks over on the Discord, including access to servers. So we do have an All of Mods 8 server currently up as of the time of this recording. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And of course, guys, if you did enjoy, click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, comment down below what you enjoyed the most. And as always, thanks for watching.